Now and forever, we bring IT to life. And welcome everyone to our Connect with Remedy monthly webinar series. This month we are going to cover the digital workplace, modernize the face of IT with virtual chat, and we will have uh, Jim Ingalls, a senior SQA engineer, and Darren Gosen, a lead product manager that takes us through this information. If you have any questions during this presentation, please uh, put them in the Q&A tab, and our panelists will be able to answer those questions during the presentation. I'll turn it over to now, Darren. Well, thanks, Greg, and hello, everyone. Uh, as Greg mentioned, I'm Darren Gosen. I'm a lead product manager at BMC for the virtual chat solution. What I want to do today is take everyone through uh, the virtual chat solution. We'll start with a product overview. We will talk about uh, the virtual agent side of the product and then move into the live chat side of the product. I also want to talk about uh, our integration with Link in which we we are enhancing in our 9.1 release, which is in beta at the moment. <clears throat> and then we can get into uh, look at the any references that we have and, and QA on, on what's presented. <clears throat> so for uh, just very quickly for a product overview, it is a chat-based solution for support for end users or business users to get support from your, your IT support department. If you think of the individuals or the personas that are using this product, uh, there are essentially three key ones, and there are other ones as well, but the, the key ones are the business user. So the business user is reaching out to the support agent for support. You know, more traditional um, approaches for support are to get up and walk to someone who may be supported in your organization or phoning someone, and then chat is another avenue for that. Um, the product has a web-based interface, a, a self-service portal, we call it, in which um, and customers can get access to the support. As I mentioned, we also have an integration to Link so that our customers can use Link uh, very much in the same way that they do for peer-to-peer -peer conversations to, to contact support. We also have um, a, a cross-link integration with portals. So from portals might be the place where you present the end users with the entry point to chat. And MyIT is an example of that where you could select the chat icon from MyIT and bring up the web client from uh, the virtual chat product to uh, initiate a conversation with support. The second main persona is the support agent. And the support agent with our product works in our support agent console. And that is uh, a, a product that they use that allows them to have conversations with uh, multiple customers at once. There's a bunch of tools in there to make it easier for them to have chat conversations with the customers, and we'll get into that. Uh, the, the next kind of main persona and is the virtual agent, and this is a software system that automates conversations with uh, customers and essentially searches different knowledge sources to provide answers to your customers uh, uh, without actually initiating a chat with a live agent. The product is uh, sold as a standalone product or part of the MyIT uh, premium or digital workplace bundle. Um, and it is fully configurable. So you can decide to deploy the virtual agent only, the live agent only, or you can deploy both as they work together. <clears throat> so first I want to talk about the virtual agent side of the product and really want to focus on why would an organization deploy a virtual agent? What are the kind of key business values to deploying a virtual agent? Well, there are, I mean, the first one is really around providing your business users um, resolutions very quickly. So as I mentioned, you can configure multiple data sources to your virtual agent. You can, you would set up your frequently asked questions, 
um, and have the virtual agent return responses in a very conversational type way. This allows your end users or business users to ask questions and get responses back in a very kind of automated and similar way each time. So it allows your uh, employees to remain productive. They don't have to actually initiate a support ticket and wait for a response. It also reduces the support calls or support incidents that actually get um, associated with live individuals and incidents within your organization. So it allows your resources to be more productive by helping cases that aren't part of the easily answered, frequently asked question type. It allows you to extend your hours of support since obviously it's a software system, it doesn't take time off, it's available 24-7. So in the times where your support desk may be ramped down or, or even off, your virtual agent continues to work and provide answers. And there's a very consistent and, and accurate uh, response that's sent. It's always the same response. Uh, and as the questions are asked, you're able to track what content is being asked of your virtual agent and, and refine your content uh, even more so it provides you know, very consistent and very accurate answers to these questions. <clears throat> so what are the lines of defense for the, the virtual agent? And really these are the types of data sources that can be configured for the virtual agent. The first one is uh, those top questions, the frequently asked questions, and those are typically created in artificial intelligent markup language or AML. And you create the answers to those in a very conversational way. So if you ask a question to the virtual agent around not being able to print, uh, the virtual agent can reply in as if you were speaking to someone and provide that information uh, either directly from the AML or point it to a knowledge source. Uh, the product has a very deep integration with Remedy Knowledge Management, um, so that typically is the second line of defense, uh, being able to leverage all of the content there. And then really can uh, integrate into any knowledge source, such as SharePoint or internal wikis, um, online knowledge, any knowledge source that has the services available in which you can pass in parameters and search parameters and be returned content. Uh, <clears throat> the final knowledge source is typically an internet search, so if you go through all of your knowledge sources and don't find an answer that's relevant to the question, you can also do an internet search and, and leverage Google or, or other web searches to, to find answers. And then finally, the end user configured has the option to escalate to a live agent and uh, all of that conversation that you've had with the virtual agent remains in context of your conversation with the live agent so your live agent understands the conversation that's taken place so far. So what I'd like to do now is show a demo that we've recorded um, and in this demo we're going to focus primarily on the virtual agent aspect of the product. We're going to see the end user web client. We're going to see some responses from the virtual agent to questions that the business user have asked. We're going to see things such as AMOL and an RKM search. Uh, again, this is some of this is from um, our 9.1 release, which is in beta now and, and will be released fairly soon. And I'll just switch it over. So the self-service portal for Virtual Chat 9.1. Hi, I'm Jim Eggles with the BMC Virtual Chat R&D team. We're going to be looking at the features and functions of the self-service portal for Virtual Chat 9.1. We're starting at the login screen, and customers can enter the self-service portal either via a login screen similar to this one, or they can also launch it through one of their existing portals or web pages. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're just logging in via this login screen. Since the application status is currently set for virtual agent and live agent, when we first enter the portal, we're greeted by the live agent. You'll notice we have several icons towards the top of the portal. These include the settings button, which allow us to either log out or select other language to converse in with both a virtual and live agent. 
we have a row of five icons at the top of the page, the first one being the chat icon, and this is our home page and where we will be conversing with both the virtual agent and the live agent. Next to that, we have the email function, and this allows us to email the chat log up until that point to ourselves or anybody else if we change it, but this address will be auto-populated with the self-service user's email address. We also have an icon up here for open items. This is rather important. It'll show the self-service users any open chats that they might have and also any open incidents that they currently have. You can see that they have no open chats, but they, he does have many open incidents. And if he wants to go and check a status of one of those incidents from here, he could just click on it. It opens up a very short summary of the status, but most importantly, it gives him a link to be able to chat with the live agent. If the user chooses this link, he will then open up a new chat session. However, it will still maintain the same incident ticket and does not open a new one. We also have the alerts tab on the top, and this will show us any service alerts that we currently have. We also have a quick links icon, and this allows the chat administrator to pre-configure links that the user can click on, which will quickly bring the user to the pre-configured web page. You'll note that the Outlook outage alert banner has been visible to us as we go through these pages. The user can just get rid of this banner by clicking the red X. However, to see the details of the alert, they go to the Alerts tab, and by clicking on it, we can then get the details of this particular alert and any updates that were made to the alert. So to begin a chat, we go back to our chat page, our home page, and we can then ask a question. Now, this out of the box, the virtual agent is named Jen, and so we will ask Jen a question. My first question is designed to generate an AML response. Now, AML stands for Artificial Intelligence Markup Language. And this is the knowledge repository that Darren mentioned, where customers will often populate with their most frequently asked questions, sort of a top 10 list. Now, out of the box, Virtual Chat has a large repository of conversational type questions. And to see one of these, we can ask something simple like, why is the sky blue? And Jen answers with something I assume is true. More specifically, a customer may program their, their top 10 answers into AML, and it might look something more like this. How do I change my password? And in this case, Jen will come back with something a little more specific. And she asks me which one I want to change. Let's say I want to change my Lotus password. I'll type my one on this one. This is a decision tree type of AML response. And we can go and then reset our password by clicking this link, theoretically. Another type of knowledge repository that the virtual agent can respond with is an RKM document. So in this case, I'm going to have a problem with my printer. And Jen looks through the RKM database and finds several articles that may help me. And if I click one of those articles, it will open into the full RKM document. And this opens in a separate tab so the user can just close this and go back to the self-service portal. If the user asks a question that the virtual agent does not find an answer for in either AML or RKM, it will do a Google search. So who is the CEO of BMC? Since it did not find that in any of the knowledge bases, it gives the user an opportunity to just click here and it will open a Google search basically pre-populated with that type of information. And we see that Bob is still a CEO of BMC. At this point, if the user feels that they've received answers to their questions, they can log out of the chat or they can also proceed to chat with a live agent by clicking the chat now button. So there we saw the chat with the virtual agent. And now let's jump into the live chat conversation. <clears throat> so as Jim mentioned, after I chat with the virtual agent, we have the ability to escalate the conversation to a live chat. We also have the ability to 
set configuration so that the virtual agent is not a part of the solution for business users and users go directly to a live chat. And again, I want to focus on what, what's the business value? Why would I deploy live chat within my organization? And really, the, there's value on both the agent and the business user side. From the agent, we're really able to increase their efficiency. <clears throat> As we'll see in, in the, the next demo, agents can have multiple chat sessions going on at once. They can actually handle up to four chat sessions uh, at a time. They use some of the tools within the product to keep conversations going while they're managing other conversations, as well as they're able to multitask because it, they're waiting for end users to respond in some cases, so they're able to, to work with other customers at the same time. So we see a huge increase in the agent efficiency and the number of support sessions that an agent can handle in a given time period compared to a uh, phone. For employees, it also gives them the ability to multitask, and it increases their productivity because of that and their overall satisfaction. What we typically see with chat is that business users are a little bit more satisfied than their typical phone support because it is in a way in which um, they are used to um, conversing, peer-to-peer -peer conversing is, is typically done in chat when you're at your desk. Uh, and they're able to avoid those, those long waits on the phone where they might have to be a little bit more dedicated um, to that support conversation. We're able to capture all of that interaction and it's done in an automated way. Uh, but all of the correspondence between either the virtual agent and live agent is captured, whereas on the phone uh, it's typically not. So, you can use that information to reduce further incidents by either updating your knowledge article and, and also um, really just keep track of, of the types of issues uh, that are occurring within the workplace so you can be more proactive about resolving them. The incident creation and closure is all automated. Your agents are not spending time actually uh, creating content for the incidents. That content is actually generated throughout the chat and all of that saved and closed, etc. in the incident is automated. So your agents really are spending the majority and bulk of their time servicing customers rather than, than updating internal tickets. And the product has technology to actually make sure that the questions that are being asked by the business users are being routed to the correct individuals within your support team. Um, by, by using routing and topic um, technology within the product. <clears throat> For a high level around the, the features of the product, it really is, you know, uh, very similar to instant messaging, um, chat-like uh, support. As I mentioned, you, you have that chat routing and the incident creation. Uh, the product works on mobile devices. It's optimized for mobile web. So uh, using your smartphone or tablet is another way in which you can initiate uh, chat conversations. The product also can handle instant language translation. So to be able to help your organization support um, gl global workforce or workforce that uh, works in multiple language, you can connect to uh, language translation services to actually instantly translate the content of, of questions that may be coming from non-English sources uh, to allow your agents to work in a single English language on the back end, but allow your, your end users to converse in their native language. And Jim showed a little bit of that in, in the video as well. So what I'd like to do is show another demo where essentially the conversation that was started with the virtual agent is escalated to a live agent. And in this demo, we'll also show uh, the support agent console and, and how a support agent works as well as the, the integration into incidents as well. We're now going to take a look at the interaction between an end user using a self-service portal and a support agent using a support agent console for virtual chat. To demonstrate this, I'm going to display both the self-service portal 
for the end user and the support agent console for the agent at the same time. On the left side, I've got Joe, who is using a self-service portal as an end user. On the right side, I've got Bob, who will be our support agent and will be using the support agent console. To do this, Bob will access it the way he accesses any of his Remedy applications. When Bob enters the support agent console, he comes into the standard four chat window view, which would theoretically allow him to engage in four chat sessions simultaneously with four separate customers. On the left, in the self-service portal, Joe has already had a conversation with the virtual agent and is now ready to chat with the live agent. To do this, he's just going to click on chat now. After he does this, we will see this session show up over in the session queue in the support agent console. For Bob to join this chat, all he needs to do is click on the session. Once support agent Bob joins the chat, Joe sees a message in the self-service portal that Bob is online and ready to chat. Back in the support agent console, Bob has a number of tools that he can use during the course of his chat with the end user. One of these is quick text. He's going to use this just to select a quick way to interact with the user. At this point, the conversation will begin. Another tool that he has to use is question scripts, which will be a series of messages sent to the user that the agent does not have to respond to, but will be automatically generated through the script. He'll send one of these now. The first one on this script starts off asking him for a daytime phone number. And Joe responds. Now, without any additional action from the agent, the next question in that script gets sent, and now he's asking for a cell phone number. The next one is now asking for an email address. And thank you indicates to me that this script is now finished. You'll notice that while each the user and the agent is typing, the other gets a little pop-up showing that that occurred. One of the new features in Virtual Chat 9.1 is agent notes, and it's over here on the right side of the Support Agent Console. We have the Associated Data tab, which gives me information about this customer under the customer information. I see who I'm speaking to and any information that's pulled up from the people form about him. We also see the incident that was created. And also, this new tab is called the Agent Notes. These notes can be typed by the agent, but are not seen by the end user. They will, however, become a permanent record in the incident ticket. And once these notes are in there, there's no saving required. They'll just now become part of the record. So the support agent also has other features and functions available to him over here, and we'll, and we'll take a look at a few. Uh, over on the right-hand side, we have a release button. This releases this chat back into the queue, and if the agent does this, it puts it back out there for reassignment. And this self-service user gets that system message that Bob has released this ticket for reassignment. In this case, Bob's going to pick it back up. And again, the user will get that message that Bob has come back online and is ready to work with him. We also have a transfer button. And this is if Bob wants to transfer this session to an agent that he thinks would be more qualified to work this issue. When he clicks this transfer button, it will pop up a transfer window. And from here, we can see that we don't have any other agents online right now, but we can look at the offline agents. And if we selected one of those agents, 
we would be able to transfer the session to them. However, that wouldn't be a very good idea because they're not online right now. So we're going to cancel this. We also have URLs that we can send to the users. These are prepackaged URLs that either the chat administrator or the agent himself has created. And in this case, we're just going to go ahead and send him the link to the BMC homepage. And as we can see over here on the support agent console, the Joe, it shows up and it says here's a link to the BMC homepage. And if you click it, it'll open in a new window. We can also invite other agents to join the session. And that works very similar to the transfer button. The difference is rather than transferring the chat from one agent to another, in this case, we would actually be asking someone to join us. And they can join in either a participate mode or monitor mode. The difference is if they participate, that second agent and or supervisor is fully participating in the chat and everybody knows that they are in the room. If you enter the session in monitor mode, this, the other agent or supervisor is not announced into the room and is only allowed to watch and cannot participate in the conversation. We also have the file transfer, and this goes both ways. The agent can transfer to the user, and the user can transfer to the agent. In this case, I'm going to come over at the users, and I'm going to click on the little paper clip, and this will allow me to attach a file to this session and send it to the agent. I can either drag and drop or browse. And I'll go ahead, in this case, to send him a picture of some penguins. And I'll put a message with it. And I post it. On the support agent side, the agent goes to the file transfer button. And from there, we'll be able to see and view the file sent from the user to the agent. These attachments also become part of the incident ticket. All right, and we'll go ahead and wrap up this conversation. And we'll just end it with a quick text. At this point, the agent is going to close this chat session by clicking the close button. Once he does that, the incident that's associated with this chat session is automatically going to be opened and presented to the agent. In this incident, we'll see that it's pre-populated with all of Joe's information. The notes field will have the beginning of the chat that happened up until they requested a live agent. However, the entire chat log is going to be over here in the work detail. And as we can see down here, we've got the entire chat log from start to finish as part of the permanent record in the incident right up until the time we close it. We also in here is the agent notes that we recorded. We see them down here. And we also have our attachment of the file that the user sent to the agent. At this point, the agent will then finish up this, with this ticket and go on to the next chat session. And that pretty much covers the basic functions and features in the support agent console as they interact with the end user in the self-service portal. Thanks. <clears throat> so that's a good view of how a chat session with a virtual agent is escalated to a live chat and the tools that the support agent is going to use to actually support the end users. And potentially support multiple end users. What I'd like to discuss now is, <clears throat> excuse me, our enhanced integration into Link that is, again, in beta in virtual chat 9.1. Now, with the product uh, previously to 9.1, we do have integration with uh, Link. Uh, the way that it works is 
the chat desk or support desk is a contact within your business user's uh, link contacts. They find that contact and they start a conversation as they would any other contact within their organization. And that conversation essentially gets routed to the support agent console that we just saw. So what we've done in 9.1 is actually taken this a step further. What we found is that integration is great, but it doesn't provide the extra capabilities that our support agent console or, or web interface provide to the end users. Things like providing them topics in which they can select which help us route to the correct agent or the service alerts which may help your business users actually be, identify issues before they actually start a chat conversation and, and create an incident, especially if there's major incidents like uh, exchange outages, et cetera. You would set a, a service alert topic for your business users, and when they open up a chat window to start a conversation, they would see that alert right away and, and potentially actually let them know um, what the issue is before actually cr creating a case. They can go to their open items and, and start conversations from previous chats or previous incidents that are, are open. And, and as well, within our self-service portal, we, we set that um, wait time expectation, which is harder to do in length. So what we've done is actually added an extension window. So when an end user starts to have a conversation with your support desk, an extension window opens in which we can embed content. And we've embedded a, a version of our self-service portal into that window uh, so that we can provide that additional context. Essentially, Link and the virtual chat solution are, are working together to, to take the conversation from Link and route it through through the, the chat window into our support agent console. It also gives the agents the ability to much easier leverage screen sharing from Link since we know that the we know who the Link user is. So they're able to essentially uh, use their link that's running, the agent's link that's running in the background as well to uh, escalate to screen sharing if they like. Uh, again, this is can be done with virtual agents or live agents or both. So you can converse with a virtual agent through through your link window. And the UI within that extension window is completely configurable and, and changeable as it is whether you're using the, the link extension or uh, the standalone product as well. Um, this supports uh, link and the new Skype for Business as well. So again, I want to do one, one final demo and just show some of the capabilities with that, that extension window. Again, this is currently in, in beta, uh, but we'd like to show it so that you get a sense for what the business user's experience is uh, when using Link.
pops up automatically after the first message is sent to the virtual agent. So let's start off with a question about Joe's issue. At this point, we see the extension window open up on the right, and the virtual agent responds to Joe in the normal link window on the left. Reading this response, we see that the virtual agent has given us some help commands, but didn't really find an answer to Joe's question, and has offered up a Google search for that search string. We're not able to insert hyperlinks into the link chat log, so this requires us to insert the entire URL into the chat log, and not just an abbreviated hyperlink as we can with the standard UI. Since Joe doesn't think this Google search will help him in searching his company's internal document knowledge base, he'll be more specific in his next question. So he'll ask, how can I access our jam docs? Virtual agent does find a relevant RKM document for that search and provides Joe with a link to that chat document. By clicking the link in the chat window, Joe is then able to open that RKM doc in a separate window. I'll go ahead and close this document. But we can see that when chatting with a virtual agent, the link or Skype user will be able to use the same knowledge sources as the standard self-service portal user interface. The extension window on the right side allows us to access the icons that we're already familiar with from the standard interface. Since there are active service alerts, we see the alert banner displayed across the top of the window. The number icon tells us there are currently two active service alerts, and we can quickly see what each of these are by just clicking on the alert. This will toggle through any active service alerts. And we can see there's only two of them. To remove the alert banner, Joe just clicks on the red X. As we look at the icon functions available to us, we'll see that we have the same functionality that we're used to. But the link extension window does have one addition to the home page that the standard user interface does not have. This is the brief problem description box. When an end user enters her first message in the chat window, it is often just a simple greeting such as hi or hello. Although polite, this message doesn't give us any real indication of the actual nature of the issue that the end user is inquiring about. This problem description feature was made available so that the chat session can be assigned a more accurate description of the problem in the chat session title. We also see a topic selection available in this environment, just as we have in the standard self-service portal when enabled. All of the system messages and greetings that we see here in these windows are configurable from the chat admin console. All of the other icons on the header have the same functionality that we see in the standard UI. We have the email function that allows the end user to send an email to themselves, which will contain the entire chat log to that point. We have the open items tab, and this allows the user to do one of two things. They can resume an open chat if they have any, and in this case, Joe doesn't have any open chats. And they can see what open incidents that they have, and if they would like, they can start a chat with a live agent. If they choose to do that, the existing open incident will be associated to the chat session. This prevents a new and basically duplicate incident from being created for the same issue. The Alerts tab will show us any active alerts, and we can drill down into the details and updates of that alert by clicking on it, just as we can in the normal self-service portal. And the Quick Links tab gives us the ability to quickly access whichever links are made available. In this case, we can launch the BMC homepage just by clicking on that link. When Joe, our end user, wants to chat with a live agent, he has two options for this. He can either type RLA, which stands for Request Live Agent, in the chat log, and if he forgets this command, he can be reminded of it simply by typing help here. Or Joe can simply click the chat down button. In either case, since topics are being used, he should click the topic first as he's being instructed. So we'll click software and chat now. We can see that the incident has been successfully created for this 
chat session, and this is now in the queue, waiting for an agent to pick it up. And if we go to the support agent console, we'll see this message in the queue, and the support agent can access it just as you would any other chat. And the user, Joe, now sees that Jim Smith is online and ready to chat. From this point forward, the interaction is going to be exactly the same as it would be with any self-service user and the live support agent. And that summarizes the basic functionality of the link or Skype interface with Virtual Chat 9.1. Thanks for watching. So that's a good view of how the link or, or Skype for Business can be used for your business users. If your organization is standardizing on, on one unified communications uh, client for business users, this is a good way in which you can actually allow them to interact with the support desk and have the capabilities that the product provides around the incident creation and storage of all of the content as well as the multitasking aspects for the, the support agent. <clears throat> and that is uh, really what we wanted to, to show within the product today. If we're looking for references or additional information on the product, uh, our, our places at BMC Docs is a very good reference. Uh, we have uh, from the 9.1 will be up when we release 9.1, but um, essentially documentation all the way from, from installing and configuring the product to using the product both as business users and as support agents is available within, within our doc space. And would I pass that to you, Greg, now? Yes, we have a few questions that uh, we'd like to ask of you. Okay, great. The first one is, is the UI brandable? Good question. Yeah, absolutely it is. The UI is for the end users both in the web uh, interface and within the link uh, since that leverages the web interface as well, is brandable to your organization. Um, as well, you can configure the content of the messages that are, are on there. Um, whatever is branded is also upgradable, meaning when you upgrade the product, you don't have to rebrand. So uh, that layer is abstracted from, from the actual product. Uh, so you can very easily make the product look and feel um, like it fits well within your organization. Hey, Darren, this is Steve. I have a question for you. Um, this is, can you confirm whether or not the solution will work on mobile devices? Hi, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the solution for the end users, for the business users to initiate chat conversations is optimized for mobile web um, devices. So you can use it with your smartphone web browsers as well as your, your mobile uh, or your, your tablet web. Great, thanks. Uh, during the live agent demo, uh, there was a transfer um, demonstration. Would this transfer task be captured in an audit log? Yeah, absolutely. So whenever any uh, transfer or release or anything like that happens, it is all uh, part of the conversation as well. As you, can, you saw, the end user also sees that something has happened, that they've either been reassigned or transferred to another agent. And it, it will audit what, you know, who the original agent was, who the next agent that it was transferred to is as well. Great. Um, if a chat is dropped, can the live agent send something to the user to restart the chat? If the chat is dropped, the live agent cannot um, contact the end user through the tool. They would contact them through another means to restart the chat. Great. Now, this one's a little long, but so bear with me. If an, if an user opens chat window, then decides to leave without waiting for the live agent, I believe an incident will be opened at this point. 
Will that be auto-resolved slash canceled with appropriate status reason or involve manual closure? It will be auto-resolved or canceled. Um, so essentially, if, if they decide to leave before the agent actually picks up the conversation, then yes, the incident will be auto-resolved with, with that reason. All right, at this time I don't have any further questions. I'll just wait another moment to see if one pops up into the, uh, the Q&A section. Uh, here's another question. Can this product be used in a secure network with no connection to the Internet? I believe it can. I, I might need some help from some of the other uh, Yeah, it, it works in an intranet, so you don't you don't have to have an internet connection. It can work without an internet connection. But you do you know you do have to have network and intranet. Perfect, thanks. Wait another moment here to see if we have another question. All right, here's one. Can you integrate with other tools such as identity management or PeopleSoft for things like password resets? Uh, so, yes, I believe we can. I mean, the, the product has integration points in it in which um, integrations can be leveraged. So at different points within the workflow, you can um, create different integrations into other products. Don, would you have any more context on that? You know, that's a, that's a tougher question. It really depends on the product and what the integration needs to be. So some, some may just be a link that you put in a web page that you can author a link to, and yes, we, you can put that in the knowledge and, and follow the link. Uh, others, if they're, especially if they're remedy-based and workflow-based, we could more easily integrate with that. Other things might be uh, a much bigger question. So the answer is, generally speaking, yes, the effort is the big question and that depends on what the technology is. Great, thank you. Well, since there are no further questions, uh, we will go ahead and wrap up today's webinar. As always, today's recording, along with the Q&A, will be posted to our BMC communities within one week from today. Thank you for attending today's Connect with Remedy webinar. Now and forever, we bring IT to life.